Hey everybody, welcome back to GR Research. Today we're going back to some basics. And recently we've had some customers who receive our kits and then look at the wiring diagrams that come with the kit and they say, oh no, it's a wiring diagram. I don't know how to read a wiring diagram. When actually it's not that hard to read the wiring diagram. So I'm going to go through wiring diagram basics. We're going to look at a schematic or wiring diagram. And we're going to talk about how to read it and what the symbols mean and how to put stuff together and just go right through the basics so that it's not scary. So any of you guys out there doing this for the first time, don't worry, it's a lot easier than you think. And if you're stumped, you can always just call me and say, Danny, I don't understand this. And I'll walk you through it. We do it all the time. So let's make this easy. This is... A little crossover schematic for our little desktop mini speaker that we did and we did several videos on that thing and as you can see there it's a very simplistic crossover now if you look at the crossover you can see that there are symbols on here and there are numbers on here so a lot of people look at those symbols and they say I don't know what those symbols mean that's okay you don't really need to know what the symbols mean in order to understand the wiring diagram. Let's pretend that all these symbols that are on here are just little square blocks. That's all they are, it's just placeholders on the wiring diagram and they all look the same. So you don't know what any of them mean. But if you look on there, there's also part numbers on all of those symbols there. Like this resistor at the first here, there's a 5.1 there. So all you have to do is look through all your parts and find a part that has a 5.1 on it. You're only going to have one part in this case that has a 5.1 on it, and that's a resistor. So even though you don't know what the symbol means, you can still match the part number to the part number. It's just like, let's pretend that all of these symbols had a letter on them, and all your parts had a letter on them. So all you're doing is matching letter for letter. But in this case, you're just matching a number and another number. So next part in the signal path, we've got a capacitor there with a 6.8 on it. If you look through your parts, you'll find that you've got a capacitor with a 6.8 microfarad part number on it. So that's where that goes in the circuit. If you look at what's next in the tweeter circuit here, you'll see there is an inductor symbol or a coil, and it's got a number on it, 0.22. Even if you don't know what that is, if you look through your parts, you'll find that you'll have a coil with a 0.22 on it. That's where it goes in the signal path. The other thing we'll see on this is a bypass cap, which is another capacitor. In, a lot of, in this case, we're using a lot of these little black capacitors that are Gen 3 sonic caps that are really good bypass caps, and we're using those quite often. So all you have to do then is lay the part on the piece of paper where it's located on the paper. In other words, this 5.1, just lay it on the paper. The next one, 6.8, just lay it there on the paper. Once you lay it together there, all you gotta do is twist everything together and you've built the network. But we're gonna make it even easier. Today we're gonna go over the symbols. And if you look, this is the first symbol you see. That is the symbol for a capacitor. Now capacitors, they are a round shaped device like a little tube. The diameter of it is usually 20% to 50% of the length and there's going to be stated values on the capacitor. In high-end applications you may see us using sonic caps, MyFlex copper foil caps. They're all capacitors. They all have this generic typical shape and they've all got a part number on it that denotes the value or the measured value of the capacitor. Next thing that you're going to see is this little jagged line right here that is a universal symbol for a resistor this is a resistor so when you look for part numbers and you see this little jagged line and you see a 5.1 on there you know that that is denoting the value of a resistor so you can look through your resistors and find that corresponding value the next symbol we're going to see this little line here with loop, loop, loop on it here, that's the symbol for a coil of wire or an inductor. That's this little device here. All it is is wire wound into a circle. That's the symbol for it. So when you see that symbol 
on the wiring diagram, like here in the woofer circuit, you see that symbol on there, and then you see a part number. It's actually a, a stated value. So it says three millihenry. So you'll then look in your parts and find a three millihenry inductor or coil of wire. And then you'll know that that's where it goes on the circuit. Sometimes you'll see something like this. Look at the bottom here, you'll see a bypass cap. That's one cap bypassing the other. What that means is we're taking one capacitor and another capacitor and we're twisting the leads together on both ends like this so that we're making basically one part out of two parts. What we're doing when we use that bypass cap is the smaller cap tends to have less stored energy and it discharges much more quickly than the larger caps. So it releases some of that stored energy and makes things sound cleaner and faster and it tends to take on some of the sonic character of the bypass cap even though it's a small cap. In this case it's a 0 0.01 microfarad. So those are your basic symbols that you're going to see. You're going to see capacitor symbols, resistors, and inductors. That's what's going to be on the wiring diagrams. All you have to do is lay the parts out and match the numbers and then twist them together. Typically when we put crossovers together we twist the whole crossover together before we do any wiring or soldering to the whole anything. We twist all the parts together. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that you don't want the inductors facing the same direction. And I'm going to link to this video a follow-up where we actually build this network out step by step and I show the whole process how to put it together. So this is like a prequel to the assembly video. So if you get one of our kits and you're thinking, oh, I don't know how to read any of this stuff, watch this video, understand how to read it. It's a lot less complicated than you think. And then watch the video where we actually assemble this crossover for the desktop mini and you'll get it, I promise. If you don't, call me. We'll walk you through the whole thing. We'll make sure that you understand it. If for some reason you can't get it, send it back to us. We'll put it together for you. We're, we're going to charge you for putting it together for you, but we'll make sure that it's correct and your product is functioning properly. Also, a lot of our customers will assemble their networks and then take a picture and email it to us so we can look at it and say, you did a great job, that's correct, or that is not correct and you need to fix it here or there. And we'll check your work before it goes into the speaker. That way you've got some checks and balances as you're putting this thing together. If you have questions along the way, you can ask questions along the way. We're here to make sure that you accomplish the assembly process of any kit that you get from us. It's just that simple. So that's it for this little video. If you have questions, shoot them over and we'll be glad to help you. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.